Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to From Heroes to Icons. My name is Jason, and this podcast is called Point Blank Period, where I will be giving you my opinion on various parts of the pop culture, primarily on science fiction, fantasy, and superheroes. Sometimes we'll hit across the manga and anime stuff, but I'm here just to let you know uh, what's really going on. Not just in my mind, but I think primarily in the mind of a lot of people that just don't have uh, the voice for it to say exactly how they feel. And today, as I guess is an introductory to this little podcast, you guys got to excuse me if I have to take a deep breath. But um, we're going to talk about what is a superhero. Hopefully we'll be able to talk to you at least once a week over here at Point Blank Period. But when I give my opinion about something, and it's something that I really love, something that I've put my blood, sweat, and tears in, the years and the money that I've put into uh, my hobbies and the pop culture of the past, the present, and I guess the future, I got a real strong opinion about it. And uh, my wife said, yeah, point blank, period. So that is where we are right here. And Miriam's definition for a superhero is a fictional hero having extraordinary or superhuman powers. Also, an exceptionally skillful or successful person. Now, we, that is a kind of a broad definition, but we know, uh, obviously, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, and all of these other cats, the DCEU, the MCU, all of these things that we have consumed on the television, at the movie theater, on our phones, and uh, everywhere else that we watch stuff. Sometimes it seems to me of late that anybody could be a superhero and everybody should be a superhero. But if that is the case, what makes heroes super? You know what I'm saying? And, uh, the past couple of years, I've started buying comic books again, and it seems that uh, I missed the turn somewhere. It seems to me that uh, pop culture, whether it be a fantasy film or now even comic books, they're more... Uh, how can I put this delicately? <laughs> they're more interested in the social commentary instead of the actual storytelling of these supposed superheroic characters. And to me, um, superheroes are what is called the paragon. They're supposed to be like the pinnacle of virtue and superhuman abilities and moral compass. But it seems nowadays it's only what uh, social media or society says it should be. And to me personally, I think a lot of people are looking for that story. That's something to make them think, to make them feel. Ultimately, when you read a book, when you read a comic book, when you watch a cartoon, when you watch a film, you want to feel something when you leave there. You want to have something like, yo, you know, whether you're crying, whether you're angry, whether you're excited, jumping around with your friends. Something to bring home to talk to the people that didn't see it. You want to be able to share it. You'd be like, yo, that thing really touched my heart. I didn't think I was going to cry. I was so excited. Oh, I hated that movie. I hated that character. You should have something that leaves with you and ultimately stays with you. Me personally, it seems like there is such a decline in what is true storytelling and we have a lot of comic book adaptations and a lot of uh, science fiction fantasy novel adaptations being brought from paper to the screen, whether it be the small screen or the big screen. And it's like everybody is magnificent in it. Everybody is ultra super. And it kind of just takes away from what being special really means. I mean... If you go back to uh, Heroes by Tim Kring that was on NBC and uh, the character Peter Petrelli 
was trying to get across to Mohinder, the scientist who was actually researching these heroes, that he had superpowers. And he just couldn't get across to Mohinder that superheroes were actually real. And he told Peter, he was like, yeah, mm -hmm, everybody wants to be super, right? And it's something about that. There's a, uh, there's something inside of us, I, I guess a, a kindling fire, a passion to reach for the stars, as they say, or reach for that greatness inside you or someone else. That's why so often uh, in society, uh, movie stars, uh, sports stars, and people like that are held at such a high standard because they perform so well and then they become idolized pretty much. But in comic books, per se, and even fantasy writing, sometimes it seems like it's turned over on its head. You know, they're, um, I'm an old dude. I'm not a senior citizen yet, but I'm an older cat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, born in the 70s and raised in the 80s. And it seems like uh, our mindset of my generation, I guess I believe that we were called Generation X, are considered old now. You know what I'm saying? We don't really get it. We don't understand what is a really good storytelling and stuff like that. But um, it is insane how people can't tell a simple superhero story. You have a dude that is kind of nothing or he was something and now he's nothing or a woman. And, you know, there's a problem. They jump in, they help. And then all of a sudden, there's a bigger problem, and then the hero's journey starts. And it's not about, a lot of time, their uh, gender or their sex or how they feel sexually or anything like that. It's about moral standards. It's about helping people. It's about saving people. And even to the point where when the hero saves others they save themselves it's about being better you know what i'm saying um sometimes i believe we think that people want to identify so much with these fictional characters that we lose the essence of what being a superhero is a superhero is in black a superhero is in white a superhero is in male or female or any other thing a superhero is just that, a superhero, a powerful person in mind, body, and spirit that goes above and beyond to get the job done. And it seems like in uh, media now, in these books that they're putting out, in the comic books and the cartoons and all of this stuff, they're so focused on just having everybody a part of it that nothing gets done correctly. The stories suck, the pacing uh, sometimes all you have is the music in the films and in the television shows and the rest of it sucks. And it seems like if they can sell spectacle, then everybody is happy. If they have every gender, every race, every color, every whatever in it and the story sucks and there's a little bit of spectacle, everybody loves it. Except for those like myself that are really looking for something to be entertained with. And uh, yesterday, well, for me it's yesterday, my son was watching, uh, he will watch both of the Willy Wonka movies. The one with Johnny Depp, and then, the, and then he went back and watched the older one with Gene Wilder. And I'm like, yeah, which one do you like better? And I wouldn't even consider Willy Wonka a hero or anything like that. But we're just talking about storytelling right now. I'm like, which one do you like better? He was like, oh, the old one. I was like, it has better music, right? He was like, yeah, the songs are better, but the other one had like better effects and stuff like that. But, yo, he turned that movie on. <laughs> and it was crazy, man. Like, I can remember myself singing these songs and I'm like, yo, look at this movie. And even the remake, there wasn't a black, Asian, indigenous, what you could pick something else besides Caucasian that was in any of those films and they was into this day they're still dope <laughs> for anybody that doesn't know i'm black 
And I'm not taking up for anybody that feels, you know, that anybody should be negated or anything like that. But just tell a decent story. Give me something I can feel. Give me something I can love. Give me something I can hate. I mean, it is crazy. I mean, talk about um, superheroes and villains. Breaking Bad was one of the most phenomenal television shows. And it showed the story arc of a man who thought he was a hero and ended up, at the end of it, ended up being the villain. How many uh, others, besides Caucasian folk, really, was in that? That doesn't take away anything from the show. We need to stop thinking in race and all of this other stuff and start thinking quality. You know what I mean? And, oh man, I, I, I guess I have to say it. Uh, don't want this thing to be longer than 15 minutes. But, I know almost all of us have Netflix. There's a show by Guillermo del Toro and DreamWorks Animation called Tales of Arcadia. And they had Troll Hunter, Wizards, and Three Below all connected in this, uh, giant universe that went back from magic times to the uh, present even with uh trolls magic people and aliens and it was pretty dope and at the end they had like two seasons of troll hunter three below wizards and then the troll hunter movie and the troll hunter movie was decently good i give it like a seven five but the first two seasons of Troll Hunter, I'm in love with. To me, it, that's some of the best American animated stuff on Netflix. But the movie, obviously, spoilers here for those that have not watched it. There's a big uh, time jumping thing that goes on in the storyline. And pretty much when they do the little Back to the Future time jump, the main character changes everything so that the sidekick becomes the troll hunter and he just kind of just goes on about his life. He kind of like rewrote time so he's never the troll hunter. So these people didn't get killed and these people didn't get hurt and these things didn't happen. And to me, that was like the suckiest, biggest cop out because his friend... I think his name was Toby or something like that. You know, he was the little fat, funny sidekick or whatever, but it fit. And he actually became a troll hunter later on, but he had his own little weapon or whatever, but he was a sidekick. And to me, it's like if the main character, Jim, doesn't become the troll hunter, none of the things that he accomplished can happen. Toby was all right. He, he was okay. You know, so he was a good sidekick. But you're going to make it that, oh, well, everybody can be the troll hunter. And to me, that's just like, that's not a superhero. He's a sidekick. You know what I'm saying? He didn't grow to become that hero. Even Jim had to grow to become the troll hunter. And he had a different type of character. Toby had that sidekick character trait that he could become a hero, but only via Jim. You know what I'm saying? And when they keep doing stuff like that, I find in myself like they're trying to water down what it means to be a superhero. That's why I said today, what is a superhero? You know what I'm saying? What is a supervillain? If, if everybody can break bad, as they say, then, then nobody's bad. You know what I mean? If everybody can save the day, then nobody's going to be saved. And this primarily is going to be one of the things that I focus on on this podcast talking about superheroes storytelling fictional characters how we look at them are they really the paragons that they're uh supposed to be even cats like superman and batman have pretty much fallen off in the storylines that i have read I'm, I'm i'm not ashamed to say that i've stopped buying superman comics i've stopped buying batman comics i've stopped buying spider-man comics because they begin to take away from the characters 
They're like, oh, that's character growth, and the character's been around for 60 years, and, you know, that's malarkey. You know what I'm saying? I call shenanigans. You're acting ridiculous with this. We have to look at this stuff, and not just because it's in the type of entertainment that we like, whether you're like a film lover, a cartoon lover, a book lover, a comic book lover, and you just take it because, well... Everything is great, and I'm just going to uplift everything. If it sucks, it sucks. I'm not going to uplift it. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to be like, yo, I don't know who did that, but obviously they need to look into something different to try to make it better. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm a pretty multicultural dude, and I think that's why my mind has a broader outlook on how storytelling and characters, growth, and world building and all of that should be because when you look at it, I'd be like, listen, I only got an hour and a half. You know what I mean? Don't blow it for me. You know what I mean? I set aside this time, you know, make me happy. And then you watch and they'd be like, I can't get those two hours back. That's like one of my things. You know what I mean? But point blank, period. This is the way that it's going to be over here. I'm going to come to y'all, let y'all know what's going on. Haven't seen Batman yet, but definitely going to have to have something to say about that and what's what else is coming out moon knight obi-wan a whole lot of hot stuff i hope it's hot that's coming out and um you definitely gonna hear from me on that um had some talk going on about anime and manga and stuff i fell off for a few years but my daughters always keep me abreast of what's going on all of my kids love anime so we definitely going to be talking about that also. I will have them on when a little bit over the time that I wanted. 16 and some change, almost 17 minutes. Thank you, everyone that has taken the time out to watch. Watch. Always on YouTube. To listen to this podcast. Yo, no editing. No uh, huff and puff. No fluff. You get it here. Uh, the raw, unadulterated J. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, everybody. Please leave a comment. Subscribe to it. Look for me next week. And as always, my opinion will be here point blank.